Okay, so my name is Todd. Uh, inside Second Life, I'm Todd Burgess. Uh, Samsara.rocks is our organization. Uh, also, Burgess Industries. Samsara is my rock band. It's been around for, since the 90s. And, uh, you know, I decided to, after a, a few years hiatus to come back into Second Life and just keep on uh, the way it was uh, for all these years. I've been in Second Life for uh, 14 years. I'm, uh, I am never got into mesh, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to that. So that's the next step there, trying to get back into building stuff. Uh, we have a few music stores inside the Yong Wang Sim. And uh, so I'll invite you to, uh, well, go take a look at the stores and listen to our music. There's three stores that represent the three albums of our band. However, uh, I did my uh, DNA with 23andMe, and I also uh, got myself a Zeus-level uh, uh, subscription at My True Ancestry, and that gave me insight in, into my genealogy, into my uh, ancestry, into my DNA uh, ancestry, and I also built my uh, family tree with all the information that I had, with part of the tree that my mother gave me, and with world subscription at Ancestry.ca. So I'm at 35,000 people in the tree, 81 royal families, and so my story is probably the story of many people in North America, because that's what happened. A lot of people who came to North America are Protestants, um, and they were running away from persecution uh, by the church and uh, whatever financial system was behind the church in Europe at that time, which is probably or most likely the same money power that's behind everything that you see today. Okay, so anyways, we'll uh, show you. I've got a. I opened up a, a museum in um, a sim uh, in this sim Yan Wang, and it's the. Uh, and I'll just move forward here. It's the. Uh, the sun's in my eyes. I'll just close the curtain. The Historical Museum of Our Royal European Forefathers and Mothers in Yan Wang and Second Life. Okay? So, uh, I'll invite you uh, to stay with me while we tour it. I divided... Well, the, the, the building that we got is a Spanish uh, villa-type castle. And uh, there's a reason behind why I chose that, is I, uh, about 12% of my ancestry is Spanish and Portuguese, and also a lot of my French ancestry is from southern France. And they seem to have married in with, the, with the, the Scottish royalty, for example, and different other royal families. Anyways, we'll get to that as we go forward. So uh, this building, uh, there's some flags on the outside. So, uh, for example, there's the flag of uh, the Kingdom of Aragon, flag of the Kingdom of Navarre, the naval flag of the Kingdom of France on a pole, which I really find interesting is that you have the Huguenot symbol at the bottom, which, you know, it, it sort of shows how much power the Huguenots had in France before they were like really, you know, attacked and actually uh, they were kicked out through the use of draconian methods. So uh, that said, literally draconian methods because the word draconian comes from that, from the methods that were used to kick the Protestants out of Europe. So anyways, the first floor is based on ancient history so you will see that those would be my ancient ancestors. Anywhere from Jesus Christ and before Jesus Christ. Okay, so if you take a look here, on the ground, there's Medusa and uh, Perseus, which is one of my ancestors, according to uh, the research. Okay, I got two trees. I got the tree that's the DNA tree that's proven. And then I got the tree of legends, because you know what? I don't discount legends. I think that the legends are most likely true. And, and, and it would be very arrogant 
to uh, dismiss them. And I do see that a lot of different uh, cultures or people or, 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 or media powers that be seem to take away credibility to certain cultures. So here, uh, my goal is to celebrate all cultures and to celebrate everything that makes me up today, you know. And you know what? I come from all over the world and I'm proud of that. So let's check it out. So the, the first place, uh, well, the first person is Perseus. And Perseus uh, is the one who killed the Medusa. You know that legend? If you look at the Medusa in the eye, he turned to stone. Well, he managed to cut her head off. Well, here he is with the head in his hands. So uh, he was, uh, you know, I, I see a, a lot of courage, you know, in these uh, ancestors. Here's the next one is King David or David versus Goliath. So there's a legend where giants used to populate the earth. These legends you see in the Middle East, you see in uh, uh, the Levant, you also see on the islands of, uh, like for example, Sardinia. So giants seem to have been a reality in the in ancient times. And David, our ancestor, or my ancestor, uh, you know, he would have uh, uh, killed Goliath with, uh, with a stone. So here's King David, and his symbol is also the symbol of the Irish, and I didn't know why until I did my, my, my ancestry, and turns out that about a hundred roads of, you know, my ancestry lead to King David, and one of them is through the Irish kings and the Scottish kings. Okay, so that's sort of the first things you will see when you get into the, the room. There's a snake plant, you know, wink, wink. Here we have Andromeda. She'd be in my family tree also. I don't really appreciate the treatment that was reserved for her. As you can see, she seems to be tied to a rock while cold waves beat against her body. Okay, so here we have... Uh, Bo, which is the Grand Empress Dowager of China. So how are the Chinese? How are the Chinese my ancestors? Well, simple. The Chinese met the Zongnu. And uh, the Zongnu. This is Motun of the Zongnu. These Zongnu were trying to, well, we're invading China. And, and China felt harassed, built the Great Wall of China, and said to themselves, at least the Han Dynasty said to themselves, maybe if we married our daughters into the Zongnu Chinese, then uh, we would uh, be able to get peace or to buy peace. So that's what happened. So all European royalty, from what I understand, has Chinese maternal lineage, which would represent the dragon, and paternal Mongolian, which seems to be a mix of, 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 of whatever existed in Siberia before, and Persians, and, and Asians. So, so the, the, the Mongols met the Chinese, moved west, and, and as they moved west, mixed and mixed and mixed, we're talking about thousands of years, and they became, they mixed with the Hunics or the Huns or the White Huns that came from like Pakistan and India and that area. And, 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 then, and then take the white skin of the Asians and, 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 and the, the warrior type, hunter gatherer type sturdiness of the Mongols meeting with the fine features of the Persians, long noses, pointy noses, and you got somebody that looks like me, or or the Vikings, or the Europeans, or the Anglo-Saxons, the Visigoths, the Goths, you see? The Goths, the Visigoths are a mix of all these different people, including the people of the Levant. So when you break down my DNA, it says that I've got 30% um, uh, um, uh, Neolithic farmer, about 35% hunter-gatherer or western hunter-gatherer 
and then about 23% Eastern hunter gatherer. And then I got the basil. Basil seems to be like this Middle Eastern, very ancient type of, uh, of uh, I, I'd like to know, I got to read more about what basil is, but it's interesting. It has to do with, 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 with the Assyrians and, and going into like really old ancestry. I'd speculate to say maybe it has to do with Sumer and Babylon and the hybrid theory. Who knows, eh? Okay, so these these Zongnu became the Huns, became the Scythians when they met the Persians. You see, so they used the tech the techniques from both and the influence from from Asia. Because as at the top you see the Onansky Datsan, which is a Buddhist monastery in Siberia. You see, so if you mix all these cultures that clash together, well, you get the Xiongnu that meet the Persian, you get and meet the Trojan and the Turkish, and you got yourself Scythians, these nomad warriors that that that, that hunted on horseback with bows and arrows. And uh, you see, they, they de developed the Parthian shot. You see, you know, right here. You see, these, these techniques seem to be reproduced all over, you know, the, the plains. Uh, any, everywhere from Russia down to, uh, you know, to Samaria, down to ancient Babylon. It's pretty interesting. You see the Persian kings on camels hunting deer. And then the Persian kings on horseback hunting rams same technique eh very important very important to to dominance and and they're the people that became ultimately with time you see the red hair on this beautiful woman they became royalty all over Europe okay Onansky my dad's name's Onansky Onansky Datsan is pretty much the only thing I find that relates to the name Onansky and it just so happens that Maltaboy comes from about the same region. So it's a safe bet that that's where I'm from, my paternal lineage. Okay. Now that said, when you go through the royal lineages, because it's that's there's my paternal lineage, my maternal lineage, my dad's mom, she's French, she's got royalty. So my ancient ro uh, my ancient lineage is also Roman, as you can see here. You've got Tiberius, Clodius, Nero, Caesar, Drusus, and then Drusus the Elder, and guess what? Mark Antony of Rome. Those are my ancestors. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. And you see, there's this is a, an empire, and uh, the Seleucids, which were like a Greek, Masonian empire, Macedonian, I would say. I still have a lot of that DNA in my ancient DNA makeup. And so the Seleucids, they were like Greeks. And then right here, you got a pretty important guy, pretty not a lot of documents, Brutus of Troy. He would be the ancestor of all the Gaelics and, 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 and Irish royalty and Scottish royalty. Scottish royalty through maternal lineage, by the way. And, and Nile of the Nine uh, Hostages. So Brutus of Troy, pretty important fig figure. You can read about his story. There's a, a story about him killing giants also, Brutus of Troy. So giants seem to be, in those days, something pretty important there. But I guess, you know, you're on a horse, you got a bow and arrow, you could some kill some pretty big people. So this this being able to tame the horse was super important. Now, why is Jesus there? Well, according to Priory of Sion, which a lot of people don't give credit to, but according to a, a lot of other sources, Jesus would have ran away with Mary Magdalene. And, and they would have ended up in, in France. Or Mary Magdalene, maybe alone, would have landed in France. And 
the Merovingian kings and also the Fisher kings, which you could look into, which are the kings that are related to the legends of King Arthur. They would descend from Mary Magdalene and, and her, her descendants. So, look, don't shoot the messenger. Go look into it. Now, I'm not saying it's true. I'm talking legends here, but I'm not going to discount it. Maybe Jesus is what Basil is about. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, so let's go up here. Second floor. You got yourself the Vikings, Ragnar Lothbrook. I don't know why, but most of the Viking historical portrayals are not paintings or pictures or statues. They're, they're actually like drawings. They're like kids' drawings. But anyways, you can see that Let's talk about a painting. I think this one is 700 AD. They're shown with, with, with turbans. So they look like either Muslim or Turkish. And if you take a look at, according to what I read, they were, they were uh, uh, idolizing idols or worshiping idols. But if you take a look at the back, these idols, it's what you see on the Saxon uh, Wu helmet, you see? So it seems like and, and you can prove it later on that the Saxons and the Vikings, I'll shock you right away, they come from the Visigoths. Okay? All these redheads, they come from this Visigoths, the Goths, seem to come all the way through Scythia to Troy. Anyway, so this is the coronation of Rollo. We'll get back to that. This is Ethelred who killed my cousins. Ethelred the Unready. And uh, this here is uh, Egbert, King of Wessex. Ethelred the Unready, uh, on my true ancestry, uh, the Danes that he killed show up as my cousins. So that sort of like confirms the fact that Ragnar, the next guy here, is my ancestor. Well, actually, he's in my tree over 60 times, Ragnar Lothbrook. And here's Harold Bluetooth, which is my ancestor, and Rollo. And through one of his descendants, William of Normandy. And uh, within all that group and married into the royalty and to the House of Wessex and all of that, you had Rurik, eh? who was, uh, and then also uh, really important in the whole story was Arpad, the king of Arpad, a descendant of Attila the Hun, you see? Hint, hint. Okay, House of Arpad married into Charlemagne. They're pivotal. These people are some of the pivotal figures in the creation of royalty in Europe as we know it today. This is Andrew of Arpad. I love his, he's my favorite, with his Lulus and the hearts and, and the lions. He looks fucking cool, man. Next, king of the Ostrogoths, king of the Visigoths, my 44th great-grandfather, uh, Theodoric the Great, who's also king of Italy. And this is here is uh, Alerico the second, king of the Visigoths. Here you've got Garcia Iniges of Pampelona. Jimenez families. And then Peter the second of Barcelona, the king of Sicily. Those are all my ancestors. So the uh, furniture that I chose on this on this floor was uh, Saxon uh, medieval type furniture. Here's the the dragon, which seems to come back everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Dragons, dragons, dragons. So important. Here, it's already 20 minutes in. So you got Brian Boru, King of Ireland. You got Nile of the Nine Hostages, King of Ireland, and here you've got Hengist, King of Kent. Ancestors through different uh, ways. You can actually find my tree on Ancestry.ca if you if you look. Under the name of Todd Pronovo. Here's the Merovingians. I want to develop that, uh, that wall of Merovingians. I think that they're more important that they portray. They actually show up as my ancestors and my true ancestry. Here's... Uh, Important guy, William of Geloni of Orange. He's uh, 
he founded an abbey and he's also a descendant of King David and as you can see he's uh, he's the blue and gold seal of the Visigoths okay so he descends from the Visigoths and uh, pretty important ancestor of mine which I find all over my tree and another pretty important ancestor is uh, Saint Louis of France and he's also my dad who's my like my dad I was adopted my dad's my sixth cousin go figure and we share that ancestor which is cool I think you know my dad also has Basque ancestry and that's the thing in Quebec a lot of people are Norman and Basque they were very powerful they were like, some of the most powerful people in history and they seem to have rubbed big money in the wrong way and here we are now in North America with nothing just like debt slaves <laughs> okay so here well it's all relevant I'm, I've got a good job I got a family I'm a happy guy don't get me wrong okay so here Robert Capet that guy is my ancestor so many times it's unbelievable and then you've got uh, Charlemagne which is my ancestor more than 60 times right here you've got William the Saint of Poitiers another mega ancestor house of Poitiers and the house of uh, Ramnulfids Ramnulfids I got a lot of uh, Wales most Welsh kings are my ancestors including uh, including Llewellyn the Great I gotta put a little more Welsh here in my tree. You know, not in my tree, but here in the museum. Oh, Palaeologos, my Greek. It's not enough space. Okay, and then the next floor, we're at 22 minutes already. I don't want it to be too long. I want you to come and visit, too. Okay, we'll let this res. Oh, that's James the Fourth of Scotland, so... Most Irish, uh, I mean Scottish kings and Irish kings are my ancestors. We got Robert the Bruce here. Then Thomas Francis, Prince of Cariano. Super interestingly, is his his son, Francis Savoyne. We're proving it genetically landed in Nova Scotia. Probably was in a fallout with his parents. Here you've got uh, Filippo de Savoy, the landless. You know that says a lot. The landless. I'm, run, I'm turning a video right now. So that's my son Isaac, but he doesn't see you. There you go. And I'm, I'm having people are visiting the yeah. museum. Can you just tell them I'm back from school? Yeah, and my son's back from school. So I'll just continue my video and I'll go see you when I'm done, okay? Okay. Bye bye. Okay, so. Um, yeah, close my door. Ah. Okay, so let's continue. Now, you have uh, well, some people could blame them all they want, but uh, Ferdinand of Aragon and uh, Isabel of Castile, well, they're the people who financed Christopher Columbus, and he discovered North America. So my ancestors financed Christopher Columbus. Some people, their ancestors is Christopher Columbus. Me, it's those who financed him. And then you've got uh, John Trastamara of Castile. You've got Alfonso of Aragon. You have Lucretia Borgia. Oh yeah, Lucrecia Borgia. She was the daughter of the Pope. So, uh, yeah, the Pope is my uh, is my ancestor. If ever you drop by, there's a tip jar, so you can tip if you wish. I like money, like they do. So, Ercole Desti, you see? That was Lucrecia's son. And then you got Cosimo de Medici. I've got a whole bunch of de Medici's. I've got to add them in... Uh, uh, yeah, and pretty much all of the Medici's are my ancestors. Catherine de, de Medici here. You have uh, William the Silent of Orange. Christian of Norway and Sweden. 
and the House of Oldenburg. Otto uh, Wittelsbach. He looks badass. <laughs> Frederick, Holy Roman Emperor, Barbarossa. Can you please close the door? Well, go close the door and uh, come in my video. Okay. Okay, so my son wants to be in the video, so I'm happy that he's with me. Okay, so then we've got uh, so Frederick Barbarossa, who was the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. And then right here you've got Charles V, who was also the Holy Roman Emperor. So uh, I've got a few Holy, uh, Holy Roman Emperors. Here you've got, he's one of my power ancestors. He's 13 time my ancestor. And he's John of Gaunt, and he's also his ancestor. <laughs> and so John of Gaunt, he's a Plantagenet. So yeah, Plantagenets have an infamous uh, reputation. But a lot of North Americans have Plantagenet ancestry. So here's the uh, Tudor, Henry Tudor, King of England. And then you've got King John of England, which is everybody's favorite enemy, favorite king to hate, because King John, you know, represents tyranny, but half of the Magna Carta barons actually are also my ancestors, and they're the ones that signed a very important treaty that gave, okay? Yeah, we'll go. So they signed a, uh, a, a, a treaty with King John, and, and that, you know, sort of like the beginning of modern politics in a way. And here you've got uh, Edward the Fourth Plantagenet, King of, Pla of, of England. So uh, Plantagenets uh, got the short end of the stick there, and they ended up losing everything. And a lot of them uh, probably uh, ran away and ended up in North America because uh, a lot of us are here, and a lot of places in Canada and Ontario are named after them. So... Uh, Somebody remembers them. It's written "Je me souviens" on my uh, on my license plate, you know, ironically, which I think I think I think they're joke like it's a way to laugh at us when they write "Je me souviens." Anyways, if you work hard like I did, "Je me souviens," you will end up remembering and finding who your ancestors are. In this case here, you've got uh, Louis of Valois and the de Valois family, and they're my answers. Like, this is, does not represent how many times they show up in my tree. It's absolutely crazy. So, I'm 60% Frank, and most of that is, like, you know, leaves to Charlemagne. And that's what happened. Like, a lot of Quebecers, they're just people that ran away from persecution. They had money enough to run away. They came here. They were Protestants. And, and over time, the church was so powerful that it convinced them. So, I invite you to come and hang out at the museum. Yeah, hang out as long as you want. Uh, there's some couches, there's some places you can. Uh, it'll develop over time. I'm going to add more ancestors, and I also intend on putting links so that you people can actually see details about these people. So that should be done over the next uh, month or so. And uh, but hey, come on down and spread the news, and uh, you know. Um, Hopefully, uh, you're going to enjoy it, and, and uh, be sure that, you know, if you come from Europe, a lot of these people are your ancestors also, so take care and play safe, okay? Bye-bye, and come and visit us in Yongwang. What? What? What?